Hello, everybody, and welcome again to The Live Wire, a special edition of The Live Wire, which this time is once again related to football. It seems like we've done a lot of football-related live wires over the last year or two. And this one um, relates to another first um, in UNC Charlotte's unfolding uh, adventure in Division I FBS football. Uh, we have our first night game coming up on a weeknight, and that poses some issues for those of us who are part of the immediate university community. And we're going to find out a good bit more in the next few minutes about everything we need to know when it comes to working on that day and parking on that day and the, the vital details of being an employee here at UNC Charlotte. So. Here to um, elaborate and illuminate, we have uh, Gene Madoran from Human Resources and Keith Wassum from Business Services. And uh, in thinking about how to start this, I guess maybe we could frame it in sort of a cause and effect. So Gene, if you don't mind, we'll start with Keith, because Keith, we want to talk about the parking situation on this Friday. Mm -hmm. And just to be clear, we're talking about Friday, October 2nd, Yes. and we have a game that day 7 p.m. 7 p.m. here on campus but the uh, the uh, situation for the rest of us begins really um, on Thursday right yes, as as, it so. yes it does I mean this it's a seven o'clock game but we'll put our event parking plan and traffic plan into place uh, by two o'clock that day on Thursday on Thursday no on, actually on Friday on Friday but but on Thursday, uh, Thursday night, we'll close lots that are used, surface lots, and I need to make that clear. We'll be closing surface lots uh, that might be used by faculty, staff, and students, but our lots that are used for the event parking, they will close Thursday at midnight. And so um, vehicles need to be out, and we'll have signage up as we do every game telling people that. So um, that would be similar to what we do for a Saturday game, but it will be starting on Thursday night. We are going to let faculty, staff, and students uh, park in deck areas that are used for event parking. Uh, that would be the Union Deck, the West Deck, the CRI Deck, uh, what am I leaving out? I think those are the main ones. Mm -hmm. And um, anyone who parks in those on Friday morning will need to leave, start leaving at 1230. They'll need to be out of those decks by 2 o'clock. Um, if they're not out of those decks, then they're going to receive a citation, and we, we really don't want to do that. Uh, so um, the best way to avoid that, particularly for faculty and staff, is to not use those areas, and we have alternative areas that we can recommend that you park in when you come to work on, on Friday morning. That, that's the safest thing. Once they, if they park in those decks, they're going to have to leave, and then they're going to have to move their car. So unless you're leaving for the day at lunchtime, I suggest that you park in an alternative deck. All right, and, and in just a minute, let's talk about those alternate locations in greater right. detail. But Jeannie, when folks hear this, they've got to be thinking, did Keith just tell me I have to go home? <laughs> and is that Keith's role to tell me I have to go home? <laughs> I think I have a supervisor. I probably ought to talk that over with uh, that person. So how, how does this work for um, everybody across the spectrum of our employees, from faculty members who have a class to teach, uh, to uh, staff members who sit in an office all day, to staff members who are out doing things on the grounds during the day, everybody. What are, what are the things we must know about that situation that's coming up? Well, there are some options that are available to employees. It is expected that the offices will be open and that they will be adequately staffed until 5 p.m. or during the normal core business hours. So some of the options that are available to employees is they can use leave time or bonus leave, vacation leave, or accrued compensatory time. Um, if they are able to, and it's approved by their supervisor, they could telework from an off-site location. So those are some options that are available to employees. Of course, as you said, they do need to discuss these options with their supervisor and make sure that their supervisor approves. For, for somebody who may be hearing this for the first time in this conversation on the live wire, where have you been? But besides that, we, we have talked about this. We have had some communications on campus, um, and we know because we can track the open rates on those emails that they've been seen, which is good. Um, but in, in, in that um, vein, what are the questions that you've been hearing specifically from whether it's faculty or staff coming into HR, or what kinds of information do you have on the ready because you anticipate 
the most frequently asked questions? I think the biggest question is the one that you just raised is, is the campus closed? Are we being told to go home? And is that basically free time? Um, and the answer to that is no, the campus is not closed. It will be open. It's not considered free time, but again, there are options. And one that I didn't mention is employees can also flex their time. You know, they can flex their time so that they reach their normal work week by noon on Friday. So, so there's many options available to employees. And the last option is they can be here until 5 p.m. Is this, is this from both of your perspectives? Um, a, is, is there a similar situation on other campuses that have been doing these uh, night games, weeknight games um, at Division One football level? I mean, is this, is this kind of what everybody goes through mm -hmm. and you just have to do this? Yes, and every campus has their own plan, but they're doing something probably similar to what we're doing. Um, what we have on our campus, which is somewhat similar, is, is uh, our commencement. We do a Friday sure. afternoon commencement, and we're doing a um, iteration of that plan because on commencement day, on Friday, commencement faculty and staff also have to adjust their parking patterns, and so we're we're doing that in a little bit larger scale, but it's the same concept. Yeah. Let's take a look at a few resources that are available mm -hmm. on the web. Um, Starting, let's go, let's just take a look right now. At Inside UNC Charlotte, um, we do have space uh, set aside for updates related to um, the, the parking situation in which we find ourselves. And then also, if you go to Parking and Transportation Services on the web, pats.uncc.edu, uh, boom, right there, UNC Charlotte football parking with uh, lots of useful information. And then, um, Keith, let's take a closer look at this map, which you've um, reminded me is um, our, the, the iteration of our campus aerial view that also designates areas for event parking. Um, and I think for the sake of our discussion, folks, take a look at this, and you can probably pretty quickly orient yourself to what we're looking at here. But as, as we talk about um, the situation beginning at the end of that week of that October 2nd game, um, who, who all is affected again? Is this anybody and everybody ultimately? Yeah, ultimately just about any, everybody, except for possibly those people that are on the east side of campus, like Cato and Fretwell, who might normally park in the uh, east decks. East Anyone who normally parks in the east decks or that side of campus yeah. is probably not really affected by, by and, this and plan. east throughout our experience in football has always been available even on football Saturdays. That's correct. Right? It is the deck that's available during um, stadium events. Have we ever had any issue with that being o overcrowded, too full? On a, no. So. No, we haven't. It's, we always have space. Uh, it, it may, you know, if, if East Deck 1's filled, we'd have East Deck 2 and 3. It's, that's not an issue. So. Do, do you have not just the sense, but, but the knowledge, because I know you have this kind of knowledge, but do we have adequate alternate parking for everybody? Yeah, yes, we do. Based okay. on our, our, we do counts of our parking spaces every year and we do a Friday count. Yeah. So based, based on that count, which uh, on Fridays particularly, we have fewer classes, we, we feel pretty comfortable that uh, we can park people in alternative uh, parking areas. Well, Jeannie, I wouldn't ask you to be um, hard-nosed about this, but it kind of seems like if you just take a couple of minutes, you can figure this out, and you probably don't even need to ask to have that time off on that Friday, right? Am I right? We're, we're encouraging supervisors <laughs> to be very flexible with yeah. the time off, and, and we recognize that some employees may be going to the game, sure. and so they may want to take off a few hours early just to get ready for the game. Yeah, okay. All right, um, and Keith, what, what else can you tell us about the state of affairs with um, access to and exit from campus um, either on the routes heading out of campus or the, the highways coming into campus um, as far as where we expect to be on that date, October 2nd. And the reason I ask is because um, even as we're talking now, you can't help but notice there's a good bit of construction going on and is this just gonna kind of gum it up all the more? Although it's great to be gummed up because the alternative is no progress at all and I always like to say that, but um, do you anticipate that that will kind of um, Magnify. I challenge. wish I could. I wish I could tell you no, but I think it will. We have to recognize that on any given Friday afternoon, the traffic appears to be worse earlier in the day because people are leaving work earlier from uptown. So we have to keep that in mind. 
Secondly, we have to keep in mind that we will be drawing um, hopefully 12, 15,000 people to the game that evening and they will be coming. They're not going to come at 6 o'clock. They're going to be coming probably at 3, 4, 5 o'clock. So um, my recommendation is for, for, um, for people to just plan accordingly and basically to try to leave the, uh, the main entrance, the entrance off of the East X or John Kirk, but recognize that you're going to run into traffic. Yeah. And uh, it's just kind of the reality. What else is on our football schedule this year? Are we going to have another situation? We, we, uh, this, we have a Saturday night game this week, but it, yeah. you know, that's not really affecting our, you know, what we're doing in terms of our class schedule. So right. as far as I know, all the other games are on Saturday. Yeah. Now, I, I suppose those of us here at UNC Charlotte, unless we have some kind of passing interest in, let's say, some other universities that play football, haven't had a lot of reason to really become totally fluid and conversant mm -hmm. with the, the many times that football games are played at the FBS level. It, gone are the days where it's just a Saturday afternoon thing. So this Friday night thing is likely to happen again. We are, okay, our team is going to improve every week, and that's great, but we're a pretty hot media market, and there's a, certainly a lot of interest in getting some televised games out of Charlotte and certainly on a Friday night. There are other days of the week when somewhere down the road this is going to happen too. And in, in both of your opinions, if it has to not be on a Saturday, is Friday the best time? Friday is certainly the yeah. best best time from a parking yeah. perspective because of our class schedule. Yeah. We have more available alternative parking for faculty, staff, and students. It will allow us to close most of the event lots Thursday night and still have adequate parking in our deck areas. And so, um, without a doubt, it it will be much more difficult on, on a Thursday to do that. And yeah. um, when we get to that point, we'll have to relook at our plan, but Friday, yes. Yeah. Similarly, I suppose, for employee issues. It's the same. The business seems to decline a little bit on Friday afternoon, so offices can get by with minimal staffing. Yeah. This might be a loaded question, but, you know, as far as our, our campus culture goes, do you anticipate that this kind of thing is is going to come with a lot of genuine consternation or, you know, I suppose there are few in every crowd who like to grumble about things. Is that, you expect that? But I mean, is this on the scale of problems that our campus or challenges that our campus might face? Where does this fall? Uh, I really haven't heard a lot of grumbling about it. I think part of it is we've got a lot of time to plan yeah. and consider how you're going to handle your time during that day. It's a change, and I think people are naturally resistant a little bit to change. But as we get used to it, I, I think it'll just become a fact of life here is that we have events that are going to cause us a little bit of inconvenience from time to time. All right. Yeah, I think uh, with with commencement, we hear very few complaints, and we've it's a similar plan where faculty staff have to park in an alternative location, East Deck, and um, that that really hasn't been an issue. Um, I know we have people that are real athletic supporters and some that aren't really into athletics and so we'll, we might hear a little bit more this year but I think the important thing is what we're doing now is trying to communicate in advance what those alternatives are. The people tend to get upset are the, are the, are the people that aren't aware of the plan yeah. and then they go, oh, what happened? I can't get from here to there. So. Or if they step out of their office at any point on Friday and they smell barbecue or they hear music <laughs> and they say, what's going on out here? And, <laughs> I just came out from under my rock. Yeah. No, but um, but just one other one other question related to this. Then um, this will be a regular football game with tailgating, and that will be going on on campus while many of us are here at work, right? It, tailgating it. starts uh, four hours before the game time, so tailgating can technically start at three o'clock. Three o'clock, we'll be opening up all the event lots for people who have parking permits for those lots to come come into them. Um, I want to go back and be sure that, that, that we mentioned that the, the alternative parking for that day is the, I'm um, looking up here, is, is, is the East, East Deck 1, mm -hmm. East, Deck, East Deck 1 if you have uh, premium gate access, yeah. East Deck 2 and 3 for, for anyone else, lots 4A, 5, 5A, which are also located on the east Over side of campus, area. yes. Okay. Um, the North Deck and the South Village Deck. Okay. Now, some people may think, hey, there's the North Deck, South Village Deck, they're all too far away. But we have shuttle service to all those areas 
we'll be running our regular uh, shuttle service that day. So literally you could go to East Deck or you go to North Deck first thing in the morning, park there, get the shuttle, get to work and take the shuttle back. And um, I would probably recommend, I do recommend that because it avoids having to move your car in the middle of the day, A and B. Um, it puts you in a better location for getting off campus at the end of the day. And so if you're on campus and you've, let's just say, parked over on the east side here and um, you're ready to go home, it's a normal time to go home for you, let's yeah. say mid to late afternoon, um, and you notice, gee, there's some extra noise, extra barbecue smells on campus, it must be football time. Are you going to have any trouble getting out of campus, particularly from over on the east side? What do you do, head out John Kirk? And I think you'd have, it'll be basically the same problem you'd have on any day or any given Friday afternoon mm -hmm. in terms of getting out and being able to, to go one direction or the other. But a lot of the event parking actually comes in off uh, Mallard Creek onto Cameron okay. or main entrance or the side entrances or the 29. You will not, I guess I, the one thing I should note, that is important for people to know is that uh, once we implement the plan at three o'clock, you will not be able to traverse the campus from main campus to the CRI campus. So okay. you will not be able to go down, currently it's Phillips Road, you will not be able to go down Phillips Road and out to 29. So, um, and Just head east yes. if you can. Right. And that, that entrance, the, the south entrance, and you, you said the South Village deck, is mm. an option yes but maybe some good advice would be go east if you can well, I think, because of the traffic situation on 49 i think or, south village will take you can go from south village directly to the main entrance and out or you can also go down alumni way and make a left yeah that may be a little more difficult to go out the south entrance so yeah i would i would probably pick north deck or east deck first to answer your question now are, how are plans coming along for the university-wide celebration of the stoplights on uh, 49 at the south <laughs> entrance if that day ever comes <laughs> Because we'll be there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I can't wait. I think yeah. we have lights to go up both at uh, uh, yeah. Cameron and Mary Alexander, which would be nice, and then also down to the south entrance, and also at Craver and, I guess, Craver and Cameron. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's going to really improve traffic flow, I think, internal to campus, but getting on and off campus. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Well, before we wind up, let me just make sure from both Jean Medoran, Jean Medoran and uh, Keith Wassum, anything else we've missed because I don't want to uh, pass up any opportunity while we have you two here on the live wire to, to be sure we're not fully prepared for October 2nd. I, I think I want to go back and, and be sure that I, I think I left one of the decks up, but Cone Decks 1 and 2 and lots of people parked there, CRI Deck 1, Union Deck, and West Deck, all those decks will need to be vacated before 2 p.m. Okay. And so it's that's important for you to know that if you park there regularly and you can park in an alternative location, I encourage you to do that. Um, if, you, if you are parking there, uh, you have to park there, then just know that you need to be out of there before two o'clock. Also know, we didn't touch on this, but all these surface lots are used for tailgating. We talked about being closed, so we'll have barriers there and um, just know that they won't be available. So like lot 23 up on CRI campus, all the surface lots there and the, the, the other lots that are heavily used are 18 and 19 below the, the Union building. So those would not be available on that day. But yes, Stephen, there should be adequate parking in the Union deck, the, all the alternative decks that we mentioned to, to accommodate any of those people. All right. And I think from my end, we didn't mention second and third shift employees. Mm, right. And for some of them, this will be occurring when they normally report to work. So we're asking supervisors to look at that, to plan ahead if a person works on second or third shift, to try to make sure that they know where they're supposed to park, maybe even flex their schedule so they're not coming right in with the crowd, and, and just make people aware of that. And we have talked to the second and third shift supervisors, and I think they're working with their staffs to try to make it easy for them so nobody gets stuck in sure. a grid and can't get out. Yeah, that, that is important, and I think they're working with our parking people in terms of how they would access parking. So. Yeah. All right. Well, it sounds like uh, we have a, a fun day to look forward to uh, for a lot of reasons. Uh, and uh, hopefully uh, the biggest reason is that the uh, 49ers will be, let's see, 
uh, building on, uh, stepping ahead into the uh, the winning record column at, at that point of the of the season. So, um, but again, it's uh, it's a time for firsts at UNC Charlotte. For a lot of schools, this is standard operating procedure, but uh, it's kind of exciting to be part of a university where this kind of thing is is new to us and just to make sure everything's working well. Um, I think we all feel like um, there's nothing wrong with communicating about it and in fact over communicating about it and we'll, we'll also be sending more information to folks in their email about this as well. So in the meantime, we want to say thank you once again to Jeannie Madoran from HR and Keith Wassum from uh, Business Services and uh, both of your topic areas are always so great. So we will be looking forward to having you back on the live wire sometime um, over the course of this next year and we'll cross our fingers for October 2nd. So please do. Great. All right. Thanks again. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. We'll be back next time on the live wire and keep watching uh, here on Inside UNC Charlotte.